channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be finishing up our Arc Extinction painting series. So today is going to be the third and final painting of the series. So let's get started. Okay guys, the subject matter of our third and final arc painting is going to be the gas bag, or what I like to call Appa the Airbending Caterpillar. <laughs> Now this guy is probably one of the strangest new creatures they've added to the game, and I think he's kind of cool. He's kind of creepy and cute at the same time. I'm not quite sure if I like the design or hate the design, but right now I'm kind of aiming for I like it because it does look like a caterpillar. I also think it's hilarious how they suck in a bunch of air and then just blow away like a balloon. I actually caught one and tamed one earlier that was bright red, and it kind of reminds me of the balloon from IT. Honestly, I probably should have came up with a really clever name from the movie to give it, but instead I decided to name mine Raspberry. Yes, I'm an adult and I'm very mature. Anyways, I've been playing the game a lot at night after settling down from working all day and I've had a lot of fun with it. I do have some complaints, mainly because I thought the map was going to be so much larger and it actually feels quite small. But yeah, I don't know if I'm the only one that has had this problem. I'm sure plenty of people on like Fast Dinosaurs have had this problem, but I hate that you can just accidentally leave the map. Like, the map looks like it continues and continues, but there's these like towers. And apparently you can go past those towers, but you're not supposed to. And as soon as you're past the towers, you start taking damage. Well, if you go past the towers really fast, you immediately take so much damage that everything that went with you is just gone. But I don't know, I just, I don't like that you have to pay that much attention to it, especially since a lot of the towers in certain spots are pretty far apart, so if you're not paying attention, you can easily just lose everything that you had on you. Okay, I think that's enough ranting about the game, let's talk about the actual painting right now. So if you watched my other painting videos, you probably realized that I've tried a new technique with this. Well, it kind of went a little bit out of the window with this. I don't know if it was just I was having an off day with it, but normally what I was doing with the other paintings was I was going over with a nice layer of acrylic to get a basic color down, and then I was going over certain spots at a time and getting all the details in and then moving to a next spot and then the next spot. Well, this one I ended up just kind of going all over the place and just started wanting to fill everything in. So instead of just painting like one leg at a time, I painted all of the legs all at once and I, I think I shouldn't have done it that way because I think I could have got a lot more detail in if I just took my time with each individual piece. You'll probably notice me kind of doing this closer to the end of the painting, but more at the beginning I was really committed to doing this new style and I just kind of went back to my old ways and I wish I kept with the other style because I think I could have got a lot more detail with this. But I'm still really happy with how the painting came out and I did my best to try and make it look like an actual series. I wanted all the paintings to look good hanging together. That's kind of why I decided to go with a red and orange gas bag because I wanted to have colors from the previous paintings in this painting so they kind of all went together. So I have the red that was in the background of our owl painting and then I have the orange that was kind of in the background of our frost painting. I know they're not all the same versions of red and orange but they were close enough to where I think it helps make everything a little bit more cohesive. And then the background, I decided that since I have a little bit more room, I wanted to have some trees and stuff. So I decided since the gas bag is spawned in the wasteland, I decided to kind of make it look a little bit like that. So I went for kind of like dried and dead grass and trees and stuff. And I think it looks pretty good in the background. But then I also decided that I wanted the sky to be a little bright, so I went a little bit more blue with it. I didn't want it to look super depressing, but I also didn't want it to look like sunshine and rainbows. Now I'm not quite sure when I can do another painting series. I have two ideas in mind for month series, that way the whole month can be one particular topic. And I've got a little bit of each started, but I haven't quite decided which one to fully commit to. And that's mainly because I actually have a decent amount of commissions that I need to get done first. So I'm actually quite busy. Of course, all my commissions come in right as I plan a super busy month for myself. So I had to reschedule everything so I could go around and get the commissions done. 
Now since we're on the topic of commissions, I do need to bring something up since I haven't mentioned this yet in a video. I'm actually going to be stopping commissions at the end of this month. So I'm finishing up whatever I'm working on. I'm still taking them, so I'm going to still be working on commissions past the point. But as soon as uh, January 1st hits, I'm not going to take any more work. And the main reason for this is I want to commit a bit more to the YouTube channel. I want to get more original pieces out there and I want to just get a lot more content out. And it's really hard to arrange commissions and do all of this at the same time. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a break or a permanent thing. If I do start up, I'm going to probably change how I take commissions completely, mainly because the way um, Etsy has it is it you just have someone message you, hey, I want this, and then you talk back and forth and stuff, and it takes a lot of time to arrange an actual commission unless someone's not super picky and just, just like, hey, this is what I want, here's all the pictures and references, I can afford this, and then I give them a price, we do the deposit and whatnot and it's super easy when that happens but most of the time commissions don't work like that. Usually there's a lot more back and forth conversations and figuring out what to do. And because of that, if I do end up going back and taking commissions again, I want to set it up to where it's a lot more easy. So basically, if someone messages me, hey, I want a commission, I can send them like a Word document, fill this out with all the information, give me your price range, the size you want, give me all of this, and then I'll be back with you with what I can do for your price range, size, and details kind of thing. So it'd be kind of like, hey, give me all the information first, and then I'll figure out how much to charge and different things like that. So I thought that would be a lot easier way to do, but I do need to end up figuring out how to do that, especially with Etsy and different things like that. But yeah, once I get all of my orders finished, hopefully we can start getting some really cool projects out. I want to get some larger things going, more detailed things, maybe a couple, two or three parter things that aren't giant, but they require a lot more showing of different things. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. I just want to work a lot more on my YouTube than uh, commissions and different things like that. And also doing this, I can end up filling my shop more. So if I make a video about doing a creature, instead of just making one of that creature, I might have time to make like three of them. So more than just one person has the opportunity to buy one. Now if you guys are curious on what I'm working on, I'm currently working on a commission for a raptor and I think I might end up making a video about it because my raptor video that I currently have up is really old and it'd be really fun to do another raptor, especially since the theme of this is a little interesting. And then I'm also working on a commissioned Pokemon, which I'll probably make a video out of as well, especially if I want to do a Pokemon themed month. And then I have two different creatures from video games that I need to work on, and then a dragon for somebody. So yeah, that's just the commissions. I also have other projects that I'm currently finishing up that are going to be videos and different things like that. So hopefully it won't be like maddening to get all of this done. But you know what? I'm actually really excited for it. I'm really excited to start another year, get some new things going, change things up, and just get a lot more started. See, now this is one thing that is really hard, especially with the new year. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that does this, but you make a giant list of, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 and then you're going to get super excited. The first month you burn out because you're trying so hard, and then the rest of the year is like just struggling to get by, and then you never get any of the things that you wanted done. And I think I need to just kind of work on that and understand how much I can actually work on and how much I can't actually get done. But yeah, I'm going to be trying to make this year a lot more productive by not freaking out and trying to get so much done. Because I found like the more things I give myself to do, the less I actually get done. I need to work like day by day, week by week, month by month, stuff like that. I need to work on little bits and pieces of time and get those things done before I look at the giant big picture. because. That is a little overwhelming. Honestly, this painting is actually a really good representation of that. I started out super organized and everything was being done piece by piece and then all of a sudden I'm just painting everything all at once and I'm all over the place. <laughs> That's funny, a painting of a gas bag is a good representation of who I am. Never thought about that. 
Okay, we're kind of getting close to the end of the painting, so I figured I'd ask you guys a question. Do you guys like doing the three small individual paintings? Is that a good idea to stay with? Or every now and again, should I work on a larger painting that I break up into three videos? But I don't know, would you guys end up liking a series like that where it's just one painting we're working on, but each video is working on one specific thing in the painting? Or do you end up liking doing three different paintings with all similar themes but different subject matters? But yeah, let me know if you guys want to see anything in particular. I know you guys are super creative and a lot of my ideas for videos come from the comment section because you guys come up with things that I just don't think of sometimes. And I really like that because it does challenge me to come up with something else other than just what's floating around in my head. Okay guys, and that's how I painted the gas bag from Ark Extinction. I had a lot of fun with this one. It was a little bit more challenging than the other ones. Surprisingly, you would think it would be a little bit more simple, but I still had fun nonetheless. Anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed this painting series. If so, leave me a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!